Okay, let's talk email, specifically the mail app that comes as standard with your iPhone. Not exactly the most exciting app, but a really important one, and actually a pretty useful one once you know how to properly use it. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 tips to help you get the most out of your mail app on your iPhone. I'm using the latest version of iOS 15 as I make this video, so do please ensure that you're also using the latest version to ensure that you can do everything that we cover in this video. Oh, and very quickly, I'm creating lots of these tips and tutorial videos at the moment, covering lots of different areas of iPhone, iPad, and Mac usage. So if that's something that would be of interest to you, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them. Okay, let's get into it. One of the biggest issues with email is the sheer volume of them. It can be really hard to distinguish important emails from unimportant ones, and that's not even taking spam emails into consideration. Your mail app will do its best by default, but there is a function that you can use which will make it much easier and more effective, and that's the creation of a VIP list. To add a sender to your VIP list, open an email that they've sent you, tap on their name as the sender to take you to a contact page for them, then choose Add to VIP. A couple of things will happen now. The first is that if you've got the relevant notifications set up, VIP emails will come through as a notification on your phone, rather than simply disappearing quietly into your inbox. So if you're waiting on an important document from a VIP, for example, that can be super helpful. We bought a house last year, for example, and we didn't want to be constantly checking the email app for messages from our mortgage broker or our solicitor, so adding everyone to the VIP list for that period of time really helped. It also means that all emails from VIPs will come together in a special VIP inbox, which you can access from the main mail screen. And VIP emails can come from multiple inboxes, and they'll all show together here in the VIP inbox. So let's say, for example, that you've got a personal email account and a work email account. You can have different VIPs across both of those inboxes, but they would all show together in the VIP inbox. To remove a VIP status, simply reverse the process that you use to make them a VIP. Find them in an email, tap on their name, then choose remove from VIP. The easiest way to do this, of course, is to head into the VIP list, so it's useful to have a clear out of it every now and then. If you get a lot of email, prioritizing and managing your email can be tricky, but mail can make this easy for you to do. On the main mail screen, if you tap edit up in the top right corner, this is where you can organize the order of your different mailboxes. Bonus tip by the way, if you tap to the left of a mailbox to deselect that mailbox, you're not gonna delete the mailbox. You're just gonna remove the shortcut to it up here at the top. You can still access the full mailbox down at the bottom and mail will still show in all inboxes. This can be useful if you've got a mailbox where you get a lot of junk mail. You might not want it taking up space here. But beyond that, when you press edit, you can also add in smart mailboxes. So for example, you might want a smart mailbox that shows you only emails received today, or only unread emails, or only emails with attachments. You can see that you've got a few different options to choose from. Now, we're calling these smart mailboxes. Really, they're filters. You're just applying a quick filter to help you locate things that might be of interest to you, but they can still be super helpful, particularly if you're not just juggling lots of email, but perhaps lots of email across a number of different mailboxes. To remove a smart mailbox, just reverse the process. Tap the edit button, uncheck the smart mailbox that you no longer want. Again, it's not gonna delete the emails or anything like that. It's just gonna stop the smart mailbox from being visible to you. If you get unwanted calls from people, you can block their number. And if you don't know how to do that, here's a bonus tip. Just go to the phone app, tap on the I next to the number, then choose block this caller down at the bottom. But the same works for email. So if you've tried unsubscribing and someone is still bombarding you with emails, you can block them. Let me show you how. In the email app, tap on the sender of an email so that you can see their email address like we did before with VIP. Underneath add to VIP, you have the option to block them. Now, one additional thing we need to cover with this, if we go to settings and then mail, and then scroll down to the threading section, you've got blocked sender options because you can choose what you'd like the mail app to do with blocked emails. Now, call me old fashioned, I kind of always thought that a block would mean you literally didn't want to be bothered by emails from that address. And so I personally want blocked emails to go straight in the bin. 
but you can choose to have them show in your inbox and simply be marked as blocked if you wish. The one reason for that I can think of is if you're building a legal case against someone sending you unwanted emails, this would allow you to flag them and keep a record of them. Heading back a page in settings, you can see a list of blocked individuals. A minor frustration here, I wish Apple would separate this out into emails and phone numbers as they bunch them all together for some reason, and if I wanted to remove someone from the block list, it would be much easier if you could group them and perhaps even search within this list. You can swipe on an email to carry out a number of different functions without having to go into the email itself. By default, if you swipe from left to right, you have the mark on red option. If you swipe from right to left, you have the delete or archive option, the flag or remove flag option, and then this ellipsis button, which gives you access to a much wider menu of options, including various reply options. But if those swipe options aren't really in line with the way that you use your mail app, you can configure them. The way that you do that is you head to settings, then mail, and then swipe options, and you can see that you can change what you can do for both the swipe left and the swipe right. So if I go into swipe left, for example, you can see that I can change it from flag to either none or move message. If I go into swipe right, I can change it from markers red to none, flag, move message, or archive. So consider this a kind of quick action that you can really configure for the way that you want to work. Oh, and flagging messages, just in case you weren't aware, is actually really helpful. You can flag a message in any one of a number of colors, and then so long as you have the flagged inbox showing, you can choose to view only the flagged messages. I use this as an action flag. In other words, if something is flagged, it means that I've got an action to complete in relation to that email. So let's just make sure that you know all the tools at your disposal when working on an email. You almost certainly know that pressing the new email button is going to create a new email for you, but did you know that if you flick down on the email as you're writing it, it will drop the email to the bottom of your screen, allowing you full access to your email inbox at the same time? So for example, if you need to check something in an email you've been sent, or if you need to copy some text or information in another email, this is how you could do just that. Then when you're ready to go back to your email, just tap on it down at the bottom and it will spring back up to the top. Now, let's say that partway through this, you realize that you need to go and do something else entirely and you wanna stop writing your email, but you don't wanna lose your progress. Hit cancel, then choose save draft. Now, there's a few ways for you to get back to it. If you've got the drafts mailbox showing on your device, you can access it that way. Or you can tap and hold on the new email button, which will take you to your drafts window, showing you any unfinished draft emails you currently have saved. You can also swipe from right to left on any draft here and delete them if you wish. So this tip is actually not exclusive to mail. It will work all across iOS, but I still meet people all the time who didn't realize that this was a thing. Let's say that I wanna quickly bulk select a load of emails here on this screen, perhaps because I want to delete them. You can tap edit, then just swipe your finger down the toggle buttons on the left of the screen until you've selected all of the emails that you want to include. Just like that, they're all selected. Easy. If you have an iCloud Plus subscription, which you can either pay for separately, or you can get as part of a wider Apple plan, such as the Apple One subscription, a feature that you gain access to is Hide My Email. This is handy if you wish to sign up to services or subscriptions, and you want to keep everything separate from your main account. The email sent here will automatically forward to your main email address. You can reference and manage the email address in iCloud settings, including deleting it if you need to. You can do this manually by going to Settings, Apple ID, iCloud, and Hide My Email. Here you can see all of the email addresses you've already created. Most of the ones I've got here have been created automatically by Apple when I've used Sign In with Apple, but you can create a new one from scratch by tapping the button up at the top. iCloud will create one at random, and you can change it if you wish. You can't specify what you want here, by the way. You're just going to be bouncing through auto-generated addresses until you find one that you're happy with. You can label the address and add a note on the next screen, and then the address is created. Head into the address when it's created and press and hold on the email address to copy it, allowing you to paste it into an email field if you need to. A very legitimate tool used by marketers is the ability to track you once you open an email. 
Now by track, what I mean is to check to see if you've opened the email, check to see if you've clicked on a link, and potentially even determine things like other online activity that you've carried out or your location. Understandably, you may not want this to happen, and Apple give you the ability to stop this by setting mail privacy. To do this, head to settings, then mail, then privacy protection, and ensure that protect mail privacy is switched on. You've probably heard that you can sign PDFs on your phone, but do you know how to do it? Let me show you. I've sent myself a blank PDF form, which you can see here in my inbox. So what I'm gonna do is press and hold on the form to bring up some options. You can see that the second option is markup and reply. I'll tap that. This then takes me to the markup screen. I'm gonna use two fingers to move around the PDF and zoom in and out like you would on a photo. Then here in this field, for example, I might wanna add some information, my name in this case. So I'm gonna tap the plus button and choose text. The text box is there, and if I tap on it again and choose edit, I can then use the on-screen keyboard to input my name. As you can see, it's a bit big, so once I've tapped out of it, I'll tap on it again to select it, then press this little text button in the left of the screen. I'll make it a bit smaller, and I might even change the font to a more handwriting type of font. This here is a checkbox, so what I'll do here is zoom in a bit, then choose the pen icon, ensure that I've got the black ink selected, and then just use my finger to do a little tick. It's a shame Apple haven't included checks and crosses as default options. You can choose things like arrows and squares already. Perhaps that could come in at a later update. I'm not quite happy with the positioning of the check. So if I use this little icon next to the ruler, that's the select function. I can circle the tick and then select it and move it. Then finally, I can add my signature. We press the plus button, then add signature. If you've not already got one, you can sign your name using your finger in the space at the bottom of the screen. Resize it once you've added it, and then position it as you need to. And that's it. When you're finished, choose Done, and you can either save it to Files, Reply All, which is great if you need to fire this straight back to the person who sent it to you, or create a whole new message with it. The file will be sent as a completed PDF in an attachment. At its most basic level, you can ask Siri to send an email, and Siri will guide you through the process of sending one or using your voice. But if you head into the Shortcuts app, then choose Gallery, and then search for Mail, there are a number of curated shortcuts in here that involve the Mail app. For example, emailing the last image in your photo library. When you select this, you can choose who you would want to send it to, and then you can see the command up here at the top, saying that once you've created this shortcut, we'll then carry out the action. There's a bunch here, from sending the attendees of an upcoming event an email to let them know that you're running late, to sending yourself an email with your commitments for the day. And as it's shortcuts, you can really tweak and calibrate these to work exactly as you want them to. So there you go, 10 tips to help you get more out of the Mail app on your phone. What about you? What mail tips are you using that I've not mentioned? Or if you really don't like the mail app, what app are you using instead? Drop me a comment and let's talk about it. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.